Few things have affected our history more than a nice cup of tea. If it hadn't been for that Boston Tea Party, we'd still own the United States. To make sure of our cuppa, we smuggled in the 18th century and race clippers in the 19th, but not until the 20th would we learn from experts how to make it. An ounce and a half to a six-pint pot is the recipe when you're making it in bulk. And that's the way it's made at London's tea centre, and they should know. Freshly boiled water is just as important as a nicely warm pot, and then five minutes for it to stand while it brews. The shape of the modern teapot traces back to China 12 centuries ago, but not this one, it's only a century old. Designed to brew on its back, it's an early Victorian anti-tea leaf pot, well suited to days when tea, like gossip, was restrained by the upright. These are the seeds without which 300 billion teacups a year would remain unfilled. Tea is known as cha from Japan to Jankers. The Chinese call it old man's eyebrows. Molded into bricks, it even finds its way across the mountains into Tibet, where it's used as currency. Hence, perhaps, that old saying about scraping up an honest penny. Sooner or later, someone had to invent this automatic tea dispenser, which promises to make the railway station of the future a real home from home, believe it or not. So far as the tea centre is concerned, it's just one of many new types of tea-making devices which they test side by side with the catering staffs they train. A tea up. All I'm hoping is they'll fit glass sides to the gadget so we can all watch the pennies drop. What a splash of Aunt Aggie hits the jackpot. <laughs>